What's up guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about documentation for a water damage restoration project. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about photos. What photos do you include? How do you submit them? Do you put them on a report? Do you use software? What is important to have on that report? What's important not to have on that report? Here's the deal, guys. Documentation is important, okay? But it's probably not gonna be the type of documentation you're thinking about. And it's probably not important for the reason that you're thinking about. In this video, I'm gonna share you this. I've done this over a decade and I've done over a thousand claims as an owner. And I'm here just to share with you the best things that I've learned regarding that. I have one goal. I want the job to be covered and I want it to get paid. Is that what you want? Well, if that's what you want and you're doing water damage restoration, then you do not want to miss this video. Let's go. So as we get started, do me a favor, hit the like and the subscribe button and drop a comment down below. Let me know where you're tuning in from. All right, guys, so I'm going to break this video down into a couple different sections. Section one is going to be myths. We're going to debunk the different myths out there regarding photos and regarding documentation. The second section is going to be about photos. What types of photos do you need? There are three types of photo reports or two, three different types of photos that you need to capture. And we're going to cover all three of those. Each one of those has a different role on a project. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is the things that you should avoid, okay, when you're putting your documentation together. There's certain things that people mess up that could cost you a lot of money. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to share my screen and we'll do some real world examples. I'll show you what a good, nice, concise report looks like. And then I'll show you what a really big, long, ugly one looks like. Okay, so myth number one about documentation. Most people will say that you have to have a sketch when you're including your documentation. And that is not true. You do not have to have a sketch when you're including your documentation. Number one, how do I know this? Because we didn't turn in any sketches and we got paid every single time, okay? We never turned in sketches. Like even when we did use Xactimate, I did not include sketches on our Xactimate because I didn't bill and I didn't price things by the square foot, okay? So I'm just telling you this, if I could get paid without a sketch, you can get paid without a sketch, okay? And here's the other thing. You can give them the dimensions of the room that doesn't require a sketch. The only reason why you need the dimensions of the room is to come up with the square footage of the room, okay? And I don't even tell them that, okay? I really didn't even tell them that. I just show them photos and I show them what we did. Like we are the professionals, okay? We are the professionals here at what we do. And you don't need to be doing things that don't need to be done, okay? That's not what I'm saying. You need to be doing the right things the right way. But what I'm telling you is this. Um, it's not like you have to submit this mound of evidence in order to do your dadgum job. You don't have to. Let me ask you this. Have you guys ever done a water damage project and then like you get the email from the carrier and they're like, it's like this 48 bullet point thing of all the stuff you've got to submit. And you're like, you're so happy that you got the job and you're super stoked. And then bam, your world comes crushing down and you see, we need this and this and this and this and this and this and this, or you ain't going to get paid. And I mean, I would just like, I'd feel so drained. I'd feel all the anxiety come in. And here's the deal. That stuff, it's a freaking bullet point email that goes out to everybody. And just know this, I don't care what you want, boss. Okay. I am the professional. This is what we do. All right. And I'm going to work with my client. We're going to get this thing dried up like we're supposed to. Okay. And we document our jobs. We do everything that we should do. But I just want you to know this, that big email that they send, they send that out there to delay and distract and make you feel scared and nervous. And don't worry about that stuff. You just need to do the right things the right way and disregard what they're doing. Okay. You don't even know if the claim is going to be covered. You don't even know if it's going to be covered. Okay. Now to keep watching this video, I'm going to show you how to get them covered or Better yet, how to avoid getting them denied, all right? So, but I just want you to know this. They do what they do, and we do what we're going to do, right? But you ain't got to have no sketch. And if they say they got to have a sketch, that's a lie, Bubba. It's a lie, okay? And if you want to know more, go to workmachine.com. We can talk, and I can give you some more information. But I'm just telling you, you ain't got to have a sketch because some people don't use Xactimate, like me. Now, the next thing, here's the next thing you don't need. Uh, another myth in restoration is this. You do not need a moisture mapping software. Like you don't need a moisture mapping software. Would you like for me to tell you the software we use for moisture logs? It was called Google Sheets. It's free. It's Google Sheets. As a matter of fact, you can go to warpmachine.com and you can get our contract packages. I'll give you a set of it, okay? We literally used a Google Sheet and we took moisture points. That's about it. And that's the other thing about dry logs. Like, all right, this isn't a myth, but it's going to be a tyrant, okay? Dry logs are garbage. Dry logs are garbage, okay? Atmospheric conditions, those matter, but they don't ask for that. And I'm gonna get on my horse here for a minute, or excuse me, on my soapbox, whatever. Dry logs are there to delay payment. Dry logs are there to delay payment. I said it, oh my gosh, I said it. Yes, dry logs are there to delay payment. Number one, have you ever been paid without dry logs? If you haven't, keep doing it, you eventually will, okay? But you ain't gotta have them. 
okay? Your job is to get it dry. Now, do you need to document what you do? Sure, okay? But you don't have an obligation to provide that to the insurance company, okay? Because how you can't, like, it just ain't got nothing to do with it. And furthermore, sometimes they'll say, well, if you don't give me those dry logs, I can't pay nothing on your invoice. Let me tell you something, homie, okay? Yeah, you still do owe my invoice, but if you want to do anything, what they would not owe you for is not the entire estimate. It would only be the monitoring, okay? Because the dry logs is a result of monitoring. So if you bill for 10 hours, okay, and you got five or 600 bucks for monitoring, they don't not owe you the $7,000 invoice. They just don't owe you however much you charge for monitoring. I mean, can I get an amen? I'm just telling you. So it's they do this stuff to, say, they, to delay the payment. I'm gonna be honest with you. There are going to be cases and times where you don't have all your dry logs. You may be missing readings. You may be missing days. You may not be able to find the pieces of paper that you wrote them on. You may not be able to find the spreadsheet. There's a lot of things that are going to happen, guys, but it doesn't mean you did not do the job. It does not mean you did not do the job. Are we clear? Now, I'm not telling you that this is not something for you to just disregard documentation. But what I'm telling you is I'm trying to shatter the myth. Are we clear? The thing with moisture logs is this. Your job is to get it dry. Okay, your job is to get it dry. If on day one it's 99 and on day four it's 12, who really cares what happened on day two and three? Like literally, who cares what happened on day two and three? But you don't need a sketch and you don't need a moisture mapping software. You can use Google Sheets or Excel, okay? And you don't have to have a piece of software to sketch something out. You really do not, okay? You guys can do it if you want, but I'm just letting you know these are myths, okay? Now, the next thing that you don't need, you don't need a huge report to get paid. You don't need a huge report. In a minute, we'll share my screen a little bit later, and I'm going to show you through what was probably 12 pictures. Our report was like 12 pictures. I don't know. It might have been uh, 80 words <laughs> for a paragraph, okay? If even that, maybe less than that. What do they say? A picture can tell you a thousand words. Get the right 10 pictures, and there's your 4,000, 5,000 word essay, all right? Like you don't, the math on that was horrible. That would be like 10,000 words. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like you want to get enough pictures to tell the right story, okay? And tell enough of the story. And if you don't have enough pictures to tell the story, go get some more. Does that make sense? And sometimes typed text will help aid a little bit to, to, to say what what, do you, what are we looking at here? But if they know what they're looking at, they know what they're looking at. Does that make sense? Eight to 12 annotated pictures is all you need, baby. And I'll show you that here in a minute. But again, the next myth is this. You don't need a 45 page report to get paid. And this brings me back to another myth, another myth in water damage restoration. More documentation is not your friend. More documentation is not your friend. Too much information is actually a problem. So let's think about it this way, okay? Um, if you're there representing your client, let's say that your, your, your job, you are Robert Shapiro and you're trying to get OJ off the hook for killing Anna Nicole. I know he didn't do it, you know? So, but here's the deal. You don't want 10,000 photos of evidence to be submitted, okay? You want just as little as you can. You'd love to get all that evidence kicked out if you're on the defense. Why? Because that evidence can be damning. Now listen, in this scenario, this is not the best analogy because OJ was guilty, okay? But he still got off, okay? So just hear me out. But here's what I want you to know. All of those photos, the insurance company, okay? The insurance company are looking for information in those photos, anything they can find to help their case. That is evidence for them. Do you understand? That is evidence for them. The same way that the prosecution would look through all of the pictures to try and find something damning, okay? Like, that's what the insurance company is doing. So if you go take all, in this case, you are the, you, you are the, the police department, okay? And they are grabbing all of your pictures and they're building a case against you, which is ironic in this situation, okay? But here's what I want you to know. If you're the one gathering the pictures, you want to, this is gonna be more like Robert Shapiro's taking the pictures for OJ, okay? And here's the deal, and here's all I want you to know. The insurance company is going to talk about the pictures they want to talk about to tell the story they want to tell. And all I'm telling you, my friend, is this. You should take the pictures to tell the story that you want to tell. Because there are two different stories for the exact same thing. Does that make sense? And you don't want to lose control of that narrative. Now, I'm telling you clearly what to do. And I'm also speaking in between the lines where you can read in between the lines. If there is 100 photographs, they're going to take whatever 10 or 15 they can to best control their narrative. We don't want to pay for this. And you're going to take the best five or six or 10 or 12 to say, hey, we want this thing to get covered and get paid. That kind of brings me to this. This brings me to my next point. Here's the reality of the situation. I'm going to tell you something about insurance companies in case you didn't know. Did you know that insurance companies have a fiduciary responsibility 
to their shareholders and fiduciary responsibility, I'm pretty sure I didn't Google this today, means a legal obligation. They have a legal obligation to their shareholders, not a suggested or implied, but a legal obligation to their shareholders. Okay. They have a fiduciary legal obligation to their shareholders not to overpay on a claim. I'm going to say it again. An insurance company has a legal fiduciary responsibility to not overpay on a claim. Okay, this is not up for debate. This is a fact. That's true. Now, here's the problem with that. That is the same thing as saying they have a fiduciary responsibility, a legal obligation to the shareholders to pay as little as possible. Because not to overpay is the same thing as to pay as little as you can. Because if you can get it done for $10, Okay, then getting it done for 11, your obligation is to get it done for 10. So they have a fiduciary responsibility to minimize how much money you as a contractor will make. They have an obligation to minimize how much money will go towards that claim for the insured. So let me tell you something. The insured and the contractor should be on the same team. Okay, State Farm and Allstate is not your friend right here. Are we clear? So now let's move on to the photos. There's three types of photos that you actually need on every given claim, okay? Or every given job. We can pull claim out of the title here, restoration project, okay? Restoration project. But it's more important when it's claimed you got an insurance company involved. But there's three types of photos you're gonna need, okay? Uh, photo type number one, you can put these in folders. It's a cover your butt photo, all right? So you're gonna need a series of photos called cover your butt photos. And what we used to do in the beginning um, we wound up using company cam, okay? Like I endorse company cam. Those guys are great. In the beginning, we used Google Drive though. And Google Drive's fine too in the early days. But we used uh, three different, we had a pre-mit, during-mit, and post-mit. And, and all, those aren't quite as, but in the pre-mitigation, you, you wanna have one where you got all your photos all together. Like every possible photo to cover your butt. So you're gonna cover every wall, every piece of content, anything that you're touching or not touching, because you wanna make sure that if the homeowner says you dropped it, scratched it, or stole it, you can show that the state that it was in before you did anything. So there's one massive folder, cover your butt photos, all right? That's what you want. So that's it. The second one you're gonna need is gonna be your internal communication photos, all right? So your internal communication photos are gonna be this. This is gonna be a series of photos that you will wind up using where if you're using company cam, like we would suggest, you would annotate, and I'll show you guys an example of this a little bit later. Um, but you will actually annotate on the photo, you will tell your team exactly what to do. So this is one of the things that we also say for you guys to do when you're scaling your company, okay? One of the ways for you as an owner to kind of buy back your time or a project manager is the biggest time suck for you is just driving down the road, okay? And so what you want to be able to do is minimize how much time you're driving to and from jobs. So in the beginning, you want to go to the job and sign it, all right? But when you start to learn how to annotate photos and build an internal communication report for your team, um, then you can actually take five or six photos and annotate. You can write on the picture what to do and what to do and what to do. And again, I'll show you that in a minute and uh, maybe my editor can flash that up on the screen. Uh, but I'll, we'll show you that here at, towards the end of the video, all right? But these photographs are basically gonna be things that you're gonna be using to tell your team what to do. So let's think about this for a minute. Um, normally, if you sign the job and then you go back to the office, if you're gonna meet your guys on site again for that other trip, all you're gonna do is walk Billy and Bobby around and point and tell Billy and Bobby what to do. You're gonna be like, hey, cut this out, cut that out, put a fan here. You're literally gonna walk them around and you're gonna point and show them what to do. There's zero reason why you can't just take a picture of that room, right? This is the room, this is the wall, and write on the picture exactly what to do. And that is what we wound up doing. And that's why we like company cam because you annotate over those pictures. That's why it's my favorite software, okay, for photos. And so, um, but that's what we would do. And again, I'll show you those examples here in just a few minutes. But what you'll do is you'll replace that second trip where you're walking around showing Bobby what to do. And then you're just gonna show him four or five pictures and annotate, tell him exactly what to do. And Bobby, so you'll, you'll have a photo that says, cut all of this out, clean this, set plastic. And then Bobby's gonna send you a picture back with all the plastic set up, or maybe it cut out. Before it's annotated, telling him what to do. After Bobby takes the same picture from the same vantage point, showing that it's done. And then you as a project manager at the beginning every day, uh, you sit out and you show him what he's gonna do. And at the end of the afternoon, you review the photos and then did he do it, yes or no? Like, this is it. This is the business in a box, guys, okay? So hopefully that's helpful. But these are internal communication photos, right? So these are photos that you're not putting everything in the world that needs to be in there, but you're gonna pick a select handful of photos uh, that you want to use so you can have uh, conversations with your team. And specifically, 
if they need to do work in a room, what type of work do they need to do? These are gonna be the internal communication photos, right? And that brings us to the third set, which is this, external facing photos, right? So what is external facing photo, et cetera? The external fo uh, facing photos, these are gonna be ones that you will annotate specifically not to talk to your team, but to explain to the viewer what's going on. So these will often be the same thing that you're gonna send to your client, okay? Or whatever third party payer, maybe it's a builder, maybe it's a property manager, maybe it's a homeowner, I don't know what it might be, okay? But if you're, whoever you're sending it, just cutting the check, you wanna be able to explain who you are, what you're doing and kind of what happened. And you wanna do that in this few, photos as possible, right? So what needs to be included on your external report? But we'll show you that report here in just a minute. But just know this, the external facing report, that's gonna be something that goes to the party and you're only putting enough information on there to tell the story that you need to tell, okay? You're not putting all the, you're not putting all the photos up there from, from the cover of your butt. You're not putting the internal stuff where you're speaking to your team. It's only the outward facing. Just remember that. You've got cover your butt, internal team, external facing. Those are the three types of photos. Now. Here's a few things that you need to avoid, all right? We told you to do this. Number one, make sure that you're not putting too much information in there. Having too many photos in there, like if you don't know what you're looking at, right? Like, why are we looking at it? For me, I only like photos that clearly are annotated that tell me what I'm looking at, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, but I don't want 88 pictures, okay? Where I'm just scrolling through and I'm like, I'm just seeing guys working. Okay, that's great, I don't need that. I don't need that, it doesn't help me. That the fact that you took 98 pictures, awesome. That doesn't help me right now, okay? It really doesn't. So, and I'll show you what, what good looks like in just a minute, but here's the deal. Putting too much information in there can be a problem because you might have something in there that is damning to your case or damning in terms of evidence, or you may just lose control of the narrative. And that brings me to my second point or the second illustration. Let's talk about mold, okay? So let's presume that we've got an example. Maybe it is, you've got a refrigerator right here, okay? And, um, Maybe on the back side of the refrigerator, there's a, there's a washer and a dryer, okay? Um, so the refrigerator in this situation leaked, and it leaked recently. It was a sudden and accidental loss, okay? However, when you pull the refrigerator out, there's some mold up on the wall, okay? Now, here's the problem. The, the refrigerator supply box might be right here, all right? And then you might have a washer supply box on the other side of the wall over here, okay? So they share a wall, okay? So let's presume that you've got mold in your refrigerator area. That's an example, and that mold is not related to this. Maybe it's a little bit higher, but you you know and you're confident it's not related. Here's my point. You would not include pictures of the mold. A lot of people would take the picture, document it, be like, hey, we got some mold, this ain't us. Why would you even do that? There's no need to even do that. And here's the scenario. Presume that the, the refrigerator didn't have the mold, but maybe the hot water line behind that from the dishwasher or the washing machine, maybe it had a leak six weeks ago or six months ago or a year ago, whatever it was, something in the past, okay? And now you've got some mold that you've got to contend with. I am telling you this, including the photos for the mold on this sudden and accidental loss will jeopardize your claim. It will jeopardize your claim. Another scenario, let's say that you've got a scenario where a dishwasher, a dishwasher uh, has been installed and it is leaked and it's a leak over time, okay? That was last year, right? Well, let's say that happens. Homeowner has it fixed, all right? Fast forward a year later. Uh, they got the dishwasher replaced. They dried it out, but they did not replace the wood rot. They did not replace the rotten wood. It looked old, black, and tarnished, okay? So, uh, but it's they put a new dishwasher in. Well, right after they put the new dishwasher in, okay, um, let's say that it starts leaking. And here's what I'm telling you. If you show pictures of old wood damage and it was a new loss, the insurance company is going to assume that's a leak over time and you're going to lose that claim. Are you following me? It's really as simple as that. I call it new water on an old wound. That can happen with a dishwasher example. It can happen with a refrigerator example. It can happen with literally anything, okay? A window could have been leaking for a long time. The homeowner then had the window replaced or then reflashed it. And then six months later, it leaked again and you open the wall and there's a lot of wood rot. That adjuster is going to say that that is an old leak and that is not an old leak. Do you understand? These are examples of how you get it denied. And here's what I want you to know. New water, old wound, too many photos is a problem. If you don't understand what I'm saying now, drop a comment and let me know. Go to workwithshane.com. We can talk. There are going to be situations where if you submit the wrong photo, it's going to tell the wrong story and you're going to get yourself screwed. Now, that being said, let's talk about looking at some good photos. How about that? All right. So let's go ahead and share my screen. And here's what I want you to know. Um, this is an example of an encircle report and 
this is nothing against Encircle necessarily, but it's just not what you want to do, okay? Um, this is a table of contents, and you can look and see you've got uh, 29 pages. And this is a 37-page report. I don't know if you can see that here, but it's a 37-page report, and it's got all of these pictures, okay? Just all of this garbage stuff that you do not need, all right? And here's what I want you to know. This is not the way to do it, all right? This is not what you're looking for. Now, if you get here, and I had to scroll fast because this is one of my client's reports, all right? But here's what I want you to know. If you look right here, now we're back to having a bunch of stuff regarding um, atmospheric conditions and all that other stuff, all right? And this, I don't even think it shows atmospheric conditions. Yeah, this doesn't. This is like the calculator. Like, guys, you don't need this software to tell you what to put in there, okay? You don't need all this. Like, you can do all of this, but this is a great example of what I would not do, okay? This is a great example of what I would not do. What would I do? I would insert our moisture logs instead because our moisture logs, they get you paid, number one, and you don't need to pay a software $450 a month for photos, you get company cam for $20 a month and Google Sheets is free, okay? Like it's that simple, okay? So I want you to be aware of that stuff. You don't need to have a ton of pictures and a ton of reports. Like that's what you don't want. So you saw all those pictures, not what we're after. You saw all that stuff about moisture logs, not what you're after. Instead, I'll show you what you do want. All right, so here's an example of a photo report here. So you get to your cover report. Normally you can have the headshot here. We normally did but we didn't. So we would include, this is what we call our wrist shot. So this is something that you would typically include. The wrist shot is the front of the house. The reason why I put the front of the house on there is because in from a photos, once you're looking inside of the house, you can't really tell one versus the other, okay? Like it's really hard to tell um, a li one, really, one living room from the next, but the front elevation of the house, that is a much easier way to remember what house it is. Secondly, you can normally have the mailbox in the picture and then you can reference the actual physical address. That's something you would want to do as well. The other reason why they call it a wrist shot is because if you've got seven foot tall grass and you got a bunch of cars in the front yard, then the insurance company knows you're a risky person, okay? Or you got trees hanging over your house. Like that picture determines a lot about risk. That's how you call it a wrist shot. But here's what I'm telling you. This is a good photo report. And let's just take a look at it real quick. Number one, we've got something good on the front, okay? Um, number two, let me see if I can blow this up, make this a little bit bigger. So there's a picture of the house. Number two, we've got something that's wet and, and or excuse me, we got a wet area. So we're showing what standard is. So if you can see that, that is 12% right there. So that's, that's dry, that's wet, 31, okay? So show them what's wet, show them what's dry. There's damage, that's cupping, all right? Uh, and this is wet here. Now I'll tell you this, uh, on our estimate, we will typically put what we did on the estimate rather than the photo report. And that's just what we do. We'll put a brief summary about what we found, the date we got there. This photo report is just something there to back it up, okay? We'll typically put all of that valuable information on the actual estimate and a certain line item, okay? And then these photos are just photos to back up what we already said, okay? For whatever that's worth. Um, and partly because, do you want them to look at your estimate or do you want them to look at your photos? And I'm going to put all of that on the estimate, all right? So, anyway... Uh, this is wet, 33%. This is wet right here. Again, I probably should have annotated and put wet, but 99 is wet. Wet. Okay? This is just a further context about what we're looking at right there. Okay? Wet, 99. So that way you can see the beam, and the beam is there. If I was going to do this better, I probably would have put wet right here and annotated it, but I didn't do that. So, hey, nobody's perfect, including yours truly here. Okay? Okay. Um, but this is an example, okay, now you're looking at, this is an example of um, internal. This is a good internal communication tool or a good internal communication picture. This is where you would typically put six mil plastic tape to the wall. This is a picture that I'm communicating to my team about, okay? So just to give you an example of that, okay? So six mil plastic tape to the wall right here and rear, right there and there. That's telling my team what to do. And then here, I'm taking a picture of a huge mirror just so you can have an idea about the type of contents that are in the room. Now, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to take a picture here. I'm telling my team what to do, okay? Put a put a two-by-four top and sides and bottom, six mil plastic uh, barrier wall. I'm putting it right there. That's showing my guys what to do. I want studs here, studs here, door here, right? And obviously, the couch is going to get moved out of the way. And the guy, and this is showing wet insulation, okay? So uh, this is a blended report for both illustration purposes to you, okay? For whatever that's worth. Um, and this here is a picture of insulation in the ceiling. So it, insulation in the ceiling is not always normal um, in certain areas. So in this case, uh, I took a picture of it just to show that it was there, 
And then this is a further shot, a progress shot to show that we're working. Um, that's always good to have. I felt like that was relevant, right? And then this is an example. So here's what I had my team send back, okay? So I send them this picture. Hey, give me this. And then they come back and they send a picture. Hey, boss, here's what we did. Now, the important thing, if you notice, they didn't do what I told them to do. Exactly, right? They actually they put these things in front of it, which is fine. But, you know, I'm just letting you know, that's why it's so important to show them exactly what to do because you're not probably not going to get back everything that you're looking for, okay? And then this is a good example. Now, how about that for containment, boys and girls, okay? Like, these are these are these are studs built in there. That is how you contain a property, okay? And so I don't remember what we charged them. We probably charged them about eighteen hundred bucks, two grand for this, okay? And I have to go back and look. But these photos, this is an example of what you might use. So hopefully this is helpful. You let me know um, if it's helpful or not, right? Having these different photos. Um, water appeared in the floor and the ceiling below. So again, these are just pictures, and this particular report is a blend of things that I would typically put uh, for internal and external facing stuff. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Look, here's the deal. When it comes to photo documentation, things you need to remember are this. Number one, the devil is in the details. Number two, the insurance company is not your friend. Number three, less is more. Number four, control the narrative. Tell the story you need to tell. And, and like, if it's wet, say wet on the picture. If it's dry, show that it's dry. Don't put more in the report than what you need. If you guys have more questions, you need more help with this, go to workwithshane.com, book a call with my team and we can talk about it, okay? Here's the deal, here's what I want you to know. Proper photo documentation can help you get paid. Just remember that the insurance company is not your friend and they are not your client's friend either. They're not the enemy, okay? But you have to remember that y'all are on different sides of the same road, okay? So hopefully that's helpful. If this was helpful for you, do me a favor, share this video on social media and give me a tag, at Shane O'Dager. We'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. First off, there's a couple of other videos somewhere on the screen. You can click those now to go watch more content about growing your restoration company. Number two, if you haven't already subscribed, click my face below and that will subscribe you to the channel. And finally, if you would like for me to help you grow your restoration company, go to workwithshane.com, put in your information, and let's get on a 15-minute call. We'll see you then.